Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. There was a stunning war of a fight, a 12-rounder, won by Jaime Munguia by the thinnest of margins against Sergei Derevanchenko. And with that very, very close victory came uh, the WBC uh, silver super middleweight title, whatever that is. But um, it, this didn't need a belt. It really didn't because this was a fantastic fight. Um, well, where do we begin with this one then? Now, the first six rounds were just a plain firefight. It was violence. Um, you know, you, you could argue it was... There was some technique going on, but it was really just a case of I'm going to hit you, you're going to hit me. We're going to stand in the middle of the ring and swap bombs. And this is, you could be forgiven for thinking when you saw the fighters that this was a very bad tactic by Sergei Ger uh, Derevanchenko because this guy is 37 years old. He's a Ukrainian. He, he came up from, um, from middleweight. He had uh, three three uh, losses on the bounce. One to Gennady Golovkin. Jamal Charlo beat him. Carlos Adames won a majority decision over him over 10 rounds. And that was between 2019 and 2021. One fight in each of those years. Um, then he came back with a unanimous decision against Joshua Connolly. Um, but he would, he jumped up to, you know, super middle. Uh, it's, I think this is his first fight at super middle. And he was absolutely dwarfed by Jaime Munguia. I mean, the guy, <laughs> how this guy makes middleweight, I just don't know. It's, it's disturbing to watch, you know. To, it's, they look just look like they were in different weight divisions. But it was Derevanchenko who decided to have a good old-fashioned punch-up. And can you blame the man? Not really, no. I mean, <laughs> we wanted to have a good punch-up, and he had a good punch-up, and he was having lots and lots of success. Now, Munguia, you know, six feet tall, 26 years old, Mexican fighter, definitely not, not difficult to hit, definitely not. And Derevanchenko was just, you know, finding the target, the headshots very, very easily, didn't neglect the body, was swapping punches with him, was just swapping full bloody blows despite the fact the guy you know was what four three four inches taller and probably i don't know 10 pounds in natural weight bigger um he didn't mind and in the in the i mean the, the first round actually mungia did did shake i wouldn't say wobble him but he's kind of shook him shook uh derevanchenko but in the third round, Derevanchenko was letting it all hang out. And they, they were just banging each other, absolutely banging each other. And, um, in the fifth round, Derevanchenko had by far uh, his best round, round of the whole fight. Because he, in the first minute, actually, Mungir was putting it on Derevanchenko. I gave Derevanchenko, I think it went, when did it go now? I think it went first round and second, uh, first round and third round I gave to Derevanchenko. And the second and the fourth I gave to Munguia. And then in the fifth, Derevanchenko, just, despite the fact the first 50 seconds belonged to Munguia, he stung, badly stung, badly shook Munguia, who was all over the place. And Derevanchenko just tore after him and was throwing everything at him. It was almost like this was, you know, a six-rounder or a four-rounder. Um you know, leave it all in the ring is an expression we constantly hear. And Derevanchenko was determined to do that. They said before the fight um, that, you know, at 37 years of age, Derevanchenko was asked, you know, why are you still fighting? And he said, well, I'm Ukrainian. I fight to inspire people of Ukraine and the people who are fighting the Russian invasion. And he didn't half show it as well. And he, Munguia got out of the fifth round, but I wouldn't say he was really badly hurt, but he was just getting beaten up. And in the sixth round, he, he's kind of steadied the ship. It was, I actually gave him the sixth round. So you had this situation where one guy would win one round, the other guy would win the other, and so it went on. It was like a sort of round robin thing, you know, or a pendulum swinging, if you like. Um, and there's no doubt that in the middle rounds of the fight, again, I thought Derevanchenko stopped having a slug, slugging match with Munguia and decided to sort of, you know, box fight, if you like. Suddenly he was he was working off the jab. He was staying out of range. He was, you know, leaping in. Obviously, he's up against a much taller, bigger man. He's leaping in and landing punches and then getting out. And the speed and accuracy seemed to be giving Munguia a lot of problems. So after 10 rounds, I had 
Mungia needing to win both rounds to get a draw. Now, there's a little story behind this, and that is that Dervinchenko signed a contract for a 12 round fight, and Mungia's team beforehand said, Can we switch it to a 10 rounder? We'll give you some more money. And Dervinchenko's, uh, Dervinchenko and his team said, No, no, we want the 12 rounds. Because if someone's offering you money to reduce the, the rounds in the fight, it normally means they're either struggling at the weight or there's going to be some sort of there's some sort of reason for it. So you don't want to give them an advantage, even for an extra bit of money. When I say a bit of money, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. But Derevanchenko was like, no, no, no. Well, it's just as well, to be honest with you, that uh, just as well for Mungia that Derevanchenko didn't bite, you know, the carrot that was dangled in front of him. Because... Munguia needed, in my opinion, needed those two last rounds to win, and he won them. But he didn't, I said that he needed the last two to get a draw. Yeah, that's true. But in the last round, he got a knockdown through a hellacious left hook to the liver, which Der put Derevanchenko straight on his, his knees. Derevanchenko got up, God knows how, because it was a perfect, like, full-blooded left hook, typical Mexican-style punch to the liver. And, um... Somehow, somehow, Derevanchenko survived the round, but he, he wasn't. At one point, Mungia was saying, come on in, come on in, you know, come fight. And Derevanchenko was like, no, you're all right, mate. No, thanks. <laughs> but I thought, actually, Sergio Mora, who was on the DAZN commentary, said, you know, Mungia shouldn't be doing it. He should be going after him. And, it, and he's neglecting the body. He put him over with a body punch. There was two minutes of the round left. Um, and then he started going headhunting. And why is he doing that? Why isn't he going back to the body? I totally agreed with Sergio Mora on that point. And I thought when the final bell went, you know, this is going to be, uh, if this is a close one, Mungia is going to regret not going to the body and maybe scoring another knockdown or two, or maybe even stopping Derevanchenko. Well, on my card, I had it 114-113 to Jaime Mungia. Um, and the knockdown was the difference to me. Two of the judges also had it 114, 113. No problem with that at all. One of them, Lou Moret, had it 115, 112 to Munguia. So Jaime Munguia won a unanimous decision. But if ever there's a fight that doesn't tell the whole story, it's this. And you've got to feel for Ser Sergei Derevanchenko. I mean, another close points loss. He's got five losses on his record now, and they're all by, by decision you now. Close decisions as well. I mean, I think Charlo beat him relatively easily, but the Golovkin fight was debatable. Um, the Carlos Adames defeat was a majority decision, and now he's got this very close defeat to uh, to Munguia. He's got 14 wins as well with 10, 10 knockouts. But at 37, it's difficult to see how he can come back from this, whereas Munguia, you know, 26 years old, huge for this super middleweight division. Um... Yeah, it does look like Munguia. He's just too easy to hit. It does look like against the top, the absolute top guys at, at super middle, obviously Canelo, um, David Morrell as well, who I think is my, I think he's one to look out for, and Benavidez. I think, I think they all beat Munguia to be honest. But Valley's fun to watch. A ton of fun to watch. Jaime Munguia, um, and not without you know a lot of guts and a lot of will, a lot of determination. But this fight was on zone. It was a Golden Boy um, promotion. Go and watch it if, if you can. If you've got zone, you can watch it on the, you know, the replay or try and dig it out somewhere because it is well worth your time. It is well worth your time. Trust me. So well done to Jaime Munguia. Deepest commiserations to Sergei Derevanchenko again for, for losing another tight decision. What did you think of the fight? Comments below. I will answer them. And um, like the video if you liked it. Please subscribe to this channel. It helps us a great deal. We want to build the channel up, get some subscribe, some, some more subscribers on uh, on board. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. Not a bad fight, this one. Check it out. Bye for now.